is of, is of value out in everything and in every way, since it's all promised for the present life and for the life to come. All right, now let's do Exodus 18 and verse 25. I have an established fact that training goes on in church. Amen and amen. Thank you, Father. All right, Exodus chapter 18 and verse 25. One, two, three. All right, you can use NKJV. It's still the same thing, though, but it's fine. Yes, one, two, three, go. Let's read. What do I say? And Moses chose able men out of all Israel. Someone say able men. Out of all Israel. Now, see, this is very important. They had all Israel. But in order to get people to lead, who did they choose, please? Able men. So the fact that you are part of Israel does not mean you are able. So you can be a part of the church and you lack the ability to do the work that, you are, that you've been asked to do what? To do. You can be a part of the church, but you are lacking in what, please? In ability. Okay, so it's possible to be a part of the work. So, the entire nation was there, but in order to lead, they needed to look for who, please? To look for able men. And if you are talking about able men, you already know that these are men who are trained for the work. These are men who are what, please? Trained for the work. Able men are men who are trained for the work. So when you say somebody is able, it means that this person is trained for the work. So it's possible for someone, for instance, to be called of God, but the man is not able yet. So the man can have the fact that, well, I want you to do this, but you are not able to do it. You may even be willing to do it. Am I right? But you are not what? Able to do it. For instance, now, if you ask me now to come and play the role of out of David in church, I may be willing to do it, but I can't do it at the level of their own ability. Am I saying the truth? So they are willing and they are also what? Able. So ability is important. And in order for you to become able, you must go through training. You must go through what? Training. It is training that makes us able. What makes us able, please? Training. It's training that makes us able. It's training that makes us able. All right? And when it comes to the things of God, God is looking for able men. What's God looking for? Able men. First Chronicles 9 and verse 13. First Chronicles 9 and verse 13. The Bible talks about very able men for the work of the service of the house of God. All right? God is looking for very able men for the work of his service. So God is looking for able men. First Chronicles 9, 13. Are you here? I will sack you. Media, don't let me jump on you people today. Eh? Did you get lost in thought? Because I didn't see you even taking it out. You see now, it was there you went to. Eh? I thought you had my notes. It help is to guide you, is to help you. Wake up, come on. First Chronicles nine thirteen. All right, and their relatives, heads of their father's household, 1,760, it says very able men. It says they were able men. For what, please? For the work of the service of the house of God. So you need able men for the work of the service. You need able men for the work of what? For the work of the service. You need able men for the work of the service. Now, it also takes able men, that is trained men, to transmit things to another generation. If you don't know it, you can't pass it on. If you are not able, there is no way you can help somebody to be able. If someone does not know chemistry, can they help you? Can they teach you chemistry? If they don't know mathematics, can they teach you mathematics? No, they can't. So, in 2 Timothy 2 and verse 2, 2 Timothy 2 and verse 2, the Bible says that the things you have heard from me among many witnesses. 
the things you have heard from me among many witnesses, it says that you should commit it into the hands of who? Faithful men who will be able to teach other people. So it's possible for someone to be faithful, but they are not able. And it's possible for someone to be able, but they are not faithful. Okay? But it takes training to teach a man to be faithful, and it takes training to teach a man to be able. Am I talking to someone here? So both faithfulness and uh, ability, what does it require, please? Training. It requires training. It requires training. So quickly, what is training? Let me just define what training is for you. And then we look at why training. Training is the process of preparing a person for an assignment or task. Training is what, please? Is a process. Someone say training is a process. Say it again. Training is what? It's a process. So that tells you that process is something that is going to take some time. Am I right? It's something that is procedural. That's training. So training is going to take some time and it's going to be procedural. That's training there. Training will take time and it is going to be what, please? Procedural. So when he says it's a process, that this is not going to happen suddenly. It's not going to happen out, please. Suddenly, it will take some time. It will take effort. Am I right? So, for instance, cooking is a process. True or false? Am I right? Before you can get the end product, what do you do? You go to the market. You buy the right ingredients. Am I right? Then when you come in, you ensure that you put the right ingredients together. And when you put the right ingredients together, all right, you know you put it together in the right measures, the right quantity. Put the right spices to it. Am I right? How many of you have ate the food of someone before who put the ingredients together, but it didn't look like it? I know it's your own food. Amen. All right, so if you've eaten that kind of food before, you already know. Do you understand that? Ah, can you want get Meloni? Am I saying the truth? So you add all the ingredients, but you were not able. Do you understand what I'm saying now? You add all the ingredients to make it happen, but you were not what? You were not able. Some people here, even if they tell them to boil water, they are not able. If they boil egg, the egg will burn. Eh? Amen. Some people did no do Sometimes when they cook, you are not sure whether it's salt you are eating or it's food you are eating. Amen. We don't know whether they met Lot's wife on their journey. <laughs> Glory be to God. So it's possible for you to have all the ingredients, but you are not getting it together the right way. Do you understand that now? And so it's possible in life that you're able to tick all the boxes, but you can't just put it together to know how. To know how to use it. And that is where training comes in. Training helps you look at that, the ingredients you have, the outcome you want to get, and then training takes you through that entire process from the ingredients you will see what, please? The outcome. And at the outcome, we can look at it and grade that person and say, oh, this person did well. Oh, this person got it. Am I saying the truth? Lovely. You know, there was a time we did, uh, what do you call it? Couples hang out. No, is it couples hang out? Workers hang out. My prayer has been answered. I told you. All right. I won't say that. <laughs> All right. Now, um, there was a time we did uh, workers hang out. Uh, how many of you remember the workers hang out in Oyo? And we had the competition of what can you do with no do's in 10 minutes. How many of you? Anybody was there? Wave, shout, hallelujah. Ah, there are just some more people here. Some people are not there. We're not there. Amen. So we had that thing. Come and see skill. My God. Papa with no do's. <laughs> My God. People were becoming creative. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah? All right? Because we forced them to think. Okay, what can you do with no do's? All right? I, I saw a kind of no do's that day. Amen. But the point is, it's possible for you to have all of those things, but you don't know what to do. What will help you know what to do with the ingredients? What? Training. It's training. It's training. It's training. So let's quickly look at why training is important. Let's look at why training is important. I'm going to show you six things very quickly. Genesis 14 and verse 14 makes us know that training makes us usable and sendable. 
What does training do, do, please? It makes us what? Usable and it makes us what? Sendable. There are some people you can't send. Amen. There are some people that are not usable. Okay? There are some people you can't send. There are some people who are not usable. And the reason why they are not usable or they are not sendable is because they are not trained to do it. They are not trained to do it. Glory be to the name of Jesus. Amen. Now listen, I, if over time as a pastor, even if you have ever operated even as uh, a person relating with your siblings or even with your parents or whatever it is, you realize that even with your parents, there is some, maybe one or two persons that they can just call constantly to do something for them. Am I saying the truth? Why do they keep calling that person? They know it's going to get done. Am I right? They know it's going to get done. That if I call this person to get this done, the person is going to get it done. All right? But there are some people they are not going to call. Why are they not going to call them? They know it's either done terribly or it does not get done at all. So it's the same thing when it comes to our dealings with God and the local church. All right? There are some people here, I can't send them to do anything. Or send them to do certain things. Why? I'm not sure of how they are going to do it. All right? But if you want to help them, all right, what do you begin to do? You send them to do it, and then you begin to correct them. So you are using the process to do what, please? To train them. There are some people that if you send them, you have to pick up the job behind them. True or false? Because if you send them and you don't follow up, it will never get done. That tells you that there is something that is what, please? That is lacking. All right? You know there are some people that they say, oh, they you can't trust some people. Praise the name of Jesus. All right? So it takes training to be able to trust people. It takes what, please? Training to be able to trust. You know there are some people that if you send them, they will go and do their own thing. Do you get what I'm saying now? So it takes training to be sendable. It takes training to be sendable. It takes training. So in Genesis chapter 14 and verse 14, the Bible says, now when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, what did he do, please? He armed his 300 and what? 18 what? Who were what? So who were those he armed, please? Was it just 318 servants? Talk to me. Who were those he armed? Trained servants. Who were those he armed? Trained servants. Who were those he gave the weapons to? You know, if you give the weapon to the wrong person, he can shoot you dead. you just be at war. You are meant to be facing the enemy. Do you understand what I'm saying here? Yeah. All right, so he said, no, if you are going to go to war with me, you need to be trained. Can you imagine you are going to war with someone who is not sure of how to shoot their gun? And in the battle field, as good let is time, person has to your bomb and say, shoot the gun. Do you understand what I'm trying to say now? At that moment, you know that it's prayer points we all need. Isn't it? How many of you have played football before? Boy, guys, yeah. You played soccer before, right? You know those five aside. How do you pick those who will play with you? Eh? How do you pick? Talk to me. Do you pick someone who does not even know go, his own go post, different from the other person's go post? Is that person you will pick? No. Even if he's the owner of the boy, you won't pick the person. Because you don't want someone on your team who will make you lose. You want someone who knows how this is done. And that's the essence of training. Do you understand? Training makes you pickable for the team. Do you get it now? Training makes you what? Pickable for the team. In your workplace, if they are not sending you to do things, be asking yourself questions. Because don't take pride in the fact that they don't send me. Me, I It may be the fact that you are useless. Am I talking to someone here? It may be the fact that they place the limit on you. So I'm, th I'm talking in terms of ministry, but I also want to apply it to your life. Why is it that they don't call you to get the job done? See, listen to me. If you are ever around a teacher, a mentor, a trainer, and you see that they keep calling other people to get the job done, go and kneel down and say, sir, what did I do? Because that's the only way you will grow. Do you get what I'm talking about here? That's the only way you do what? You will grow. Or maybe they've been sending you and they are not sending you again. You don't understand what I'm talking about here. 
Maybe they used to call you and say, ah, please, can you do this for us? Please, can you do this for me? Can you do this? And now they don't call you again. Go and ask. Some of these in your business that you need to get that feedback. Customer is not coming back. And you're not going back. You say, okay, sorry. You're, you're not right. You, do you understand what I'm saying now? Because if you are not willing to learn, you are not willing to be sent. If you are not willing to learn, you are not ready to be what? To be sent. So there is a willingness to learn that helps you. So look at these people. They were born in his house. They were just meant to be servants. But what they did began to do to them, he began to train them for what? You know some people start complaining. I bought my wife from Bill. Do you understand? Or maybe my own is to just look after Katulu. Why are you training me for what? And did I ask you to train me for what? I'm not interested. But you see, the day the need is going to come, you now know why the training was there in the first place. So training makes you what, please? Usable and sendable. So please, if you are ever around, so if you are around me, for instance, I am pastor, for instance, you're like, pastor does not send you to do anything. I don't call you. It could be the fact that you, you are either lack training, no training, low training, all right, or you have bad attitude. Do you get it now? Do you get it now? Or maybe your unit does not, cannot rely on you to get something done. Is that okay now? Because you should be what? You should be sent to people. And hope you know, being sendable, for instance, in the church is not long, longevity, like, ah, this person is a quite gone. No. It's about the fact that this person can get the work done. And we know in the spirit in which this person is going to do it. Simple. Amen. And there are some of you, I'm teaching prophetically now, there are some of you that you have, initially you were sendable, you grew to a certain point, and suddenly you began to plateau. Don't do it. Because it's also possible. Do you understand that now? It's also a possibility that you are growing and growing and growing. And you say, ah, they were calling you, oh, this person is effective, that person. And then, you know, you just tank. You just began to plateau, and then you began to tank. And say, oh, they don't call you again. Is that okay now? Number two. Training is useful and of value in everything and in every way. And we saw that in our text. Why is training important? It is useful and of value in everything and in every way. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8, it says, But godliness, spiritual training, is useful. In Amplified Classic, of value in every way. It is useful and it's of value out in every way. God forgive some people. <laughs> All right. It is useful. <laughs> Good to see you, son. How are you? So this is your plan. Ah, uh, okay. All right, now. It is useful and of value, our place, in every way. Useful in everything and in every way. In 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 8, you see that. All right. It is useful and of value in every way, and it holds promise for what? For the present life. It's useful. It's profitable in all things. So training is key. Somebody say training is key. Now, number three, and this is very important. I want to let you know this. Training makes you know and descend differences. It makes you know and do what? Descend differences. You know, for you now, you may not know the difference between AK-47 and on pass gunshot. Am I saying the truth? But when a soldier, when a soldier, all right, is in your space, okay, maybe there is, if a soldier is here now, and he hears a gunshot, he can tell you the kind of gunshot, the kind of gun the person is using, and he can tell you the number of rounds that that shot, do you understand what I'm trying to say now? But you, under the knockout, you are gone. Do you understand? Because you are not trained to know the difference. Training makes you know what the difference is. Do you understand the point here? Training makes you know the difference. Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 14, let's say. Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 14. Let me use TPT, please. Hebrews 5, 14. So, you see, a person, I, there was a movie I watched. I can't remember the, the title of the movie. Many years ago, a man was holding someone hostage, some people hostage in a house. Then he was shooting. And then uh, two, like two police officers, a detective and a police officer were going towards him. All right. And then the other guy would say he should cover him. 
All right. So the man was counting as he was shooting. The man will count. When he stops, the man will run to take position somewhere else. As he bends down to reload, all right, he will run to take position somewhere else. He will count again. He will run until he got to the place where the guy was behind him and then killed him there. Okay? The guy was facing on those, uh, facing those uh, on, but he killed him there. Now, when he was done, the other police officer was asking the detective, how did you know? He said, I know the number of rounds that that gun will go. Do you understand? So he knows that by the time he shoots sev seven times, I have about, it will load for maybe about 30 seconds. I have 30 seconds to move. Do you understand? But if you don't know, all right, you can run at the wrong time. Does that make sense to you? If you don't know, you can do what? You can run at the wrong time. Hebrews 5, 14, TPT, bring it up for me, please. Let's see it. The Bible says, but for solid food is for the mature. Solid food is for who? TPT, if you can bring it out. It's for the mature who spiritual senses. Perceive what, please? Heavenly matters. So, the training is to train your perception. It's to train your senses. That as a soldier of Christ, you can know some things. Does that make sense to you? Hope you know that in warfare, there are strategies. In warfare, there is what? There are strategies. So let me give you an example. Do you know that silence is not proof that everything is fine? So think, for instance, anybody who has lived with a two-year-old, three-year-old, Araluwa, and my boys, all right, if you've lived with them before, and they are quiet, you better go and check. They may be doing baptism for your phone. Am I saying the truth? Or mommy's cosmetics are totally gone. And if you are not lucky, have you seen all those pictures before of what children did? Eh? Some locking themselves inside fridge. Do you get? See, the moment a child is quiet, you are worried. When you are still hearing their voice, they are playing, ah, all is well. But when you just go, hmm, go and check. Oh. Do you get the point here? See, it takes training to know the difference. If you are not trained as a parent, you just say, ah, they are fine. Walk that care, walk quiet, go. Ah. Do you understand what I'm talking about here? That quietness can be danger. And it's the same thing in the spirit. Some people feel like, ah, well, my life is just rosy, it's just good, it's just fine. Do you know the difference? Sometimes when the devil is quiet. You know, the Bible says he left Jesus or what? For an opportune time. So he went quiet for a while. But he was looking for another opportunity to strike. For you, you will think that silence is victory. Sometimes silence is not victory, sir. Silence means the fact that they want you to sleep. And while you are sleeping, it can come in and begin to pray on things. Do you get it now? So look at that scripture. It says, and they have been adequately what? Trained. Somebody say adequately trained. Adequately. Say it again. Say adequately trained. Adequately. By what? Go on. By what they have experienced. To imagine with what? Understanding. Now understanding of what? The difference. So training makes you know the difference. It brings you to an understanding of difference. See, for instance now, you know, if you're a child, I can cheat you. If I'm holding a thousand naira note, one, a thousand naira note, and I'm holding two hundred naira note, okay? You know, I can come to a child and say that, um, let me give you two. You know, two is greater than one, normally, but there are exceptions. Am I right? Two is greater than one, but there are what? There are exceptions. So I can go to a baby and say, take two. So I'm giving him 200 naira notes. And I say, give me one. What is he carrying? 1,000 naira notes. You know a baby will give me. Am I right? And then I give him something. He will be running. A, in fact, I can come and tell you, and I have to, and I have to. He can go and tell someone, I have to. But the question is, what did they take from you? Do you get the point here? What did they take from you? So we're talking about the fact that it's not at that moment, you know that two is greater than one. There is a difference between that when it comes to quantity, but there is a difference between that when it comes to value. Is it clear? So there is a difference between quantity and what, please? And value. So you can have it in quantity and you don't have it in value. You know, they say in our language, we call magic coffee bread, quello me or beje. It, you, it takes you for you to know interpretation, okay? But for you to shall know the difference, it takes what? Training. It takes training. 
you know, my friend told me a very funny story. When his dad was to resume in this, is it in the 70s? I think 70s. Is that about early 70s in you know, OEU. The dad was traveling from his village in Kogi State. All right? And then he got to a place where he saw the signboard. You know the way they can put signboards like OAU and say, welcome to Ife and all that. So he got down and said he has gotten to where he got. Meanwhile, school is still almost about <laughs> seven or eight kilometers away. Do you understand what I'm trying to say now? What does he not know? Difference. Once he saw welcome to where you are, for today, let me get down. But his journey just began. Do you understand the point now? Pastor Vigo was telling me about one of his folks. He wanted to travel with him. He were to go to the airport. He told the man, he said, the airport is not like bus station. You don't get there at the right time. And you think you will enter. You know if you don't know the difference. And he said, flight is 9 a.m. All right? He now said, don't, no problem. Where we are is not far. We'll be there 9 on the dot. You will enter. You won't enter. Do you understand what I'm saying now? Okay, why? There is what, please? Difference. And you have to begin to master what? Difference. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, let's move on. Number five, number four, right? Number four, I will go to, I will use, I will come to the one I want to go do last. Training is the key to transformation. Training is the key to what, please? To transformation. To transformation. You want your life to be transformed, you have to go to training. Matthew 4, verse 19. In Amplified, let me use Amplified for this, and then maybe TPT. I always love it in TPT too. Matthew 4, 19. This was where Jesus was calling the disciples. He told them something very powerful. He then he said to them, what did he say? Follow me. As what? As my disciples. Then he told them something must happen. Do what? Accepting me as your master and what? And teach and do what? Walking the same path of life that I walk. I'm coming back to this. And what will happen? I will make you. Fishers of men. That is, as you journey with me, there will be a transformation that starts taking place, well, please, in your life. There will be a change that begins to take place in your life. All right? And it's important for you to know this, that there is transformation in training. There is transformation where? In training. So think, for example, you know flour is cheap. Any baker here, yeah? how much is a Congo flour? Maybe one five. Good. How many Congos do you need to do a wedding cake? <laughs> you see, you are not trained in that direction. You can't give answers. It depends on the size. So let's look at uh, three tiers. So, you know, about four Congos. About, okay, four Congos. That's about 6,000. Am I right? Now, with that 6,000, you, you have baking powder. Isn't it? You have baking powder. What else do you add? Egg, sugar, am I right? What, uh, butter and all those things. By the time you add all the ingredients to make that cake and you do icing and all that, how much will it likely cost you? Eh? If you, let's even say all the ingredients and everything, depending on what you are doing. Let's say it's costing about 100,000 naira. Let me just overblow it, okay? It's going about 100,000 naira. But do you know there are people that that, what they use is 100,000 in terms of money. But how much will they charge? Yeah, 200, they are cheap. 600, yeah. Some guys charging millions for cakes. Hope you know. Do you know there are cakes they carry with chopper? You don't understand what I'm talking about here. You don't understand eh? that cake on board of Jabo. Do you understand? All right, that they have to protect it. You have to protect the cake, okay? And they charge millions for it. But the ingredients were cheap. The ingredients is the same ingredient we buy. Am I saying the truth? But what increased the value of that cake? Somebody's training. Does that make sense to you? The ability to transform that thing. Listen to me. Listen to me. So, for instance, now, this, uh, let me look for something. This uh, stool. All right, used to be wood. True or false? Inside the forest. Am I right? 
but somebody went to the forest and cut that tree down. Isn't it? When they cut that tree, maybe there was another tree there that said, he won't give one, give me one. Do you understand? And goes to church to share testimony. You see, they cut the tree in our forest today, but me, they did not cut me. Do you understand? I say, praise the Lord! Everybody will say, hallelujah. Am I right? They take that tree that they cut, they take him to some meal, two of us. And when they take it to some meal, they will, they will splinter it. Isn't it? To turn it to maybe planks or whatever it is. As they are breaking that wood, the wood is going, <laughs> don't mind me, my imagination. Is that okay now? <laughs> if the wood in the forest can still communicate with that wood, say, ah, oh, sorry. Ah, you are going through a lot, though. Ah, you are going through a lot. And then they carry that wood. Then they put it in a sawmill. Someone will now come to that sawmill and say, I need to make a chair. Am I saying the truth? All right, and so I need to buy wood. So he goes, pick the wood. All right, and he takes it to his workshop. And when he gets there, carry saw and begins to cut it to different sizes. As they are cutting it, it's spinning me. Am I right? And then when he's done, he now carries, his thing is over. They put it down for a while. They now use nail and begin to join it. Hookba, hookba, crucifixion. All right, the one in the wood is still feeling like, you see, we're good. Nothing. Well, can you what? Do you understand what I'm saying now? All right? But eventually, that wood, you bring it out. After the workshop, you bring it to a showroom. All right? They bring different kinds of shapes out of it. They now say, this is the wood. And they now put price tag on it. Is it the same price as the one they took in the, as the same one in the forest again? No. What changed? Transformation. What changed? Transformation. The one in the forest can still be rejoicing, you know? See, if you don't go through the pain, you can't carry the value. Does that make sense to you now? So Jesus was telling them that, see, guys, come. You will follow me. I'm not telling you it's going to be an easy journey. But at the long run, it's going to be what? It's going to be worth it. Why? You are going to be transformed. You are going to be transformed. So transformation is key. Are we together now? Good. Number five. Have we seen it in TPT? Let's see that scripture in TPT. Matthew 4, 19, you will say. In TPT, sir. Number five. I don't want to teach for too long today. Let me just try. I don't want to teach for too long. TPT. Are we good? Your system is hanging. Good. Jesus called out to them and said, what did he say, please? Come and follow me. Did you see? And I will do what? I will transform you. I will transform you. I will transform you. Praise the name of Jesus. Number five. Training sharpens you and makes success achievable. Training does what? It sharpens you and makes success achievable. Let's look at Ecclesiastes 10.10 and verse 15. Maybe you should use NIV now. Ecclesiastes 10.10 and verse 15. Okay, NLT. Ecclesiastes 10.10. Thank you, NLT. Let's read it together. Verse 10 for sir. Verse 10. Verse 10. Then we'll go to verse 15. All right. The Bible says in verse 10 there, it says, using a dull axe requires what, please? Great strength. So what do you do? You sharpen the blade. And what did he say next? That's the value of wisdom. Somebody say that's the value of wisdom. What does it do? It helps you succeed. Now look at verse 15 now. Then let's take verse 15 also and amplify it after NLT. Verse 15, sir. In verse 15, it says that fools are exhausted by a little work that they can't even find their way home. Now, show me an Amplified. You'll see something here. Amplified. It says the labor of a fool, so we raise him. All right, why? Because he's what? He's ignorant. Something happened to me one day, and I, I can tell you this. I came out of the house, and I saw that I had a flat tire. All right? This was years ago, many years ago. I saw I had a flat tire. And then I kept struggling. It's been a long time I had a flat tire. So the knot was already very hard. And I kept struggling and struggling and struggling with it. Okay? So I left it after a while. I can't remember who came. I can't remember who came around that day. But the person came and said, ah. I said, I have a flat tire and I'm struggling with it. He said, ah, Pastor, okay, do you have oil? I said, yes. The person poured oil on all the screws. Just poured oil on, on that and left it for a while. Then he came back after like five 
or 10 minutes and just put the, and then everything started removing. You see that now? I was ignorant. Do you understand? I was ignorant. And because I was ignorant, I was struggling. Anywhere you see anybody struggling, check it. It is always a know-how problem. Do you understand? See, when people come, for instance, I'm talking about ministry. When someone comes and says ministry is hard, they are right. Someone comes and says ministry is easy, they are right. For instance, if someone comes to you and says mathematics is hard, the person is right. And if someone comes and says mathematics is easy, the person is also right. It's dependent on what they know. It's what you know. If you don't know it, it will be hard. If you know it, it will be easy. Simple. Is it clear now? Now, the final point on why training, and this is very important for me, is the pathway to increase. Training is the pathway to increase. Job 8, 7 to 10. Job 8, 7 to 10. It is the pathway to increase. And I'm going to dwell on this scripture a bit. Job 8, verse 7 to verse 10. You know I love this scripture a whole lot. The Bible says, though your beginning was small, let's say it in KJV. Say wood here, yeah, but it says shoot in KJV. Good. Though thy beginning was small, let's read it together. What do you say, please? Yet thy latter end should greatly increase. That is, the projectile for your life is meant to be upward and forward. It can look like you started in a small way, but the projectile is meant to be what, please? Upward and forward. It should greatly increase. There should be a great increase. Somebody say great increase. Somebody say great increase. Now, this is a prayer point that if I pray for you now, I say in the name of Jesus, though your beginning be small, your latter end will greatly increase. What will you say? Amen. Amen. Powerful. We love that prayer point. It's a powerful prayer point, and I agree with you. But if you now go on to verse 8, now use verse 8 in NLT so we can connect to it a bit. So it's not using big English. Change it to NLT. Verse 8. It now says, just do what? Ask the previous generation. Ask the previous generation, what do you say? Pay attention to what? To the experience of our ancestors. Ask the previous generation, pay attention to the experience of our ancestors. Go and ask questions. That is, if you want to move from small to great, you must be willing to be trained. There must be a trainer in your life who begins to show you out. Now, when you ask them, go to verse 9, what are they going to do, sir? Verse 9, for we were born but yesterday and know nothing. So this should be your attitude. It's an attitude of meekness. I don't know anything. No, come and teach me out. If you don't have meekness, you are not going to ask. Say, ask the previous generation. Have I told you the story before? All right. Ah, who for travel with me on that trip? I can't remember. I don't think anybody was here. When I went to preach in Elisha, and Bishop Mike was asking me, he said, he said, so tell me about a row I was. And I told him, when I was done, he said, son, he said, let me tell you the mistake I made in the first 16 years of ministry. And then he began to download to me. I did this, I did this, I don't do it this way. Don't do this, don't do this. So that is called asking the previous generation. If I had gone there with the post of I know it all, will he tell me? If I was not humble, will I get that kind of insight? Trust me, that insight moved us. Boom. He just told me, said, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. The impact that move had the ministry. You think I will tell you? No, I won't tell you. You didn't pay the price for it. Do you understand that now? The impact it made. The impact it made. Just asking. Just doing what? Asking. Just asking. It says, it says our days on earth are splitting as a shadow. Go to verse 10, please. Go to verse 10. But those who came before us, what are they going to do us? They are going to teach us. And what will they do? They will teach you the wisdom of God. Change it to NKJV here. You will see something very powerful here now. Verse, will they not teach you and tell you? Well, how will they teach you? And utter what somewhere? From their hearts. People can speak from their head, and they can speak to you from their heart. So I can give you head knowledge, but I can also give you heart knowledge. There are two different things. Do you understand? There are two different things. That's the when we were a spiritual father. There are things, you know, after everybody has had the salmon outside, we now add the behind the salmon inside. Do you get what I'm trying to say now? The behind the salmon, it is kiki. You understand what I'm saying now? It's really key than even the salmon you hear outside. That is things you will not hear outside. We will hear it there. 
that we will leave. And then you just see us do one, two. And then you'll be like, the same meeting. We attended the same meeting. Yes, we attended the same meeting, but we didn't have access to the same information. Am I making sense to you now? Now, let me explain what the scripture means. Let me explain what the scripture means so you can get it. Since you're in church, let me use it as an example. Dr. Dittler, please stand. Good to see you. I'm really excited. Just stand and stay there. Yeah, just stand and stay there. Now, the Bible says, go back to verse 7. Go back to that verse 7. It says that, do your beginning be small. Your latter end should do what? Should greatly increase. Pastor, let me come. You can stand. Maybe am I good? All right, don't worry. You'll be fine. Now, this is a picture. Come closer here so that, yes. Now, this, maybe, Dr. D, come closer to me here. Maybe where the speaker is. Thank you. Now, listen. It says, do your beginning be small. This is the beginning. I know this man is tough, but beginning is small. Do you understand what I'm saying now? All right, so, do your beginning be what? Be small. Your later end should do what? Greatly increase. So, this is the later end here that should greatly increase. But this is the beginning. And there is a lot of difference between this beginning and what? And the later end. Do you get it now? There's a lot of difference. Now, for me to move from this beginning to the later end, he said I should ask the previous generation. Do you get it now? All right, I should listen to them. They will tell me wisdom. They will tell me how to do it. Remember, the labor of a fool will raise them because he does not know how. The cheapest way, all right, between where you are now and where you are going to go is, is, a tra is training and a trainer. It is what? Training and a trainer. That's the cheapest way, sir. That's the cheapest way. Now, listen to me. Look at me now. So, everywhere I put my steps, put your step there. Is that okay now? Now, follow me. Okay. Now, he's just following. Is he doing any other thing more? He's just following my steps. Am I right? He's just following my steps. He's not doing more. He's just following my steps. This is the cheat code of life I'm giving you. All right? Is he standing where I'm standing now? All right, how did he get there? Now, do you know that if he tries to do it on his own, he can go and pass that way, enter here, enter here, enter here, enter here, enter here, enter here. You see, that's why some people, their lives are full of trial and error. Their marriage is not working, nothing is working, nothing is working. Why? If you have examples and you focus on examples and you follow examples, it says be diligent followers of them who through faith and patience has done what? Obtain the promise. That's what we do. See, this is the, this is the scripture of my life. The day I got this code, I, I stopped joking with it. This is the script of my life. I follow, I've told you many times, now follow, follow, they make us. What makes us? Follow, follow. Do you understand what I'm saying now? What makes us, please? And I'm not ashamed of following, you know. I'm never ashamed of it. I follow with all my heart. I follow with everything. The moment I got the code, everything changed. Do you get the point here? Because see, once he moves and I move, will he be on the same spot? Once I move and he moves, will he be on the same spot? He can never be on the same spot. Why? He's following me. He's following me. The only problem is if I'm not moving. If I'm not also being trained. But the moment I'm moving and he's following me, he gets it. He connects with it. Do you understand what I'm talking about here? He connects with it. So, do you, do you have the art to follow? Do you get it? Do you have the art to do what? To follow. Because when you follow, you will walk into the things I walk into. So when they follow Jesus, did they heal the sick? Did they cast out demons? When they came back rejoicing, they said, oh, it's just normal. Do you understand what I'm saying here? When, G when Jesus left, did they raise the dead? Yes, they did. The same thing he did. In fact, Jesus told them, he said, greater works than this shall you do. But where's the key? In following how did we get to know Elisha? Did we know Elisha as was his prominence from the fact that he was an Greek man? No. It was the fact that he followed Elijah. All right? As a matter of fact, they forgot that he used to have an Greek business. They said, this is the man that used to pour water on the hands of Elijah. That was all they said about him. But now he has become a prophet that kings must go after. You, you say you're a prophet. You want to bring, bring business card. It's training that makes us. What makes us? Training. Somebody say Training. What makes us, please? Training. What changes our story, please? Training. What shapes our lives, please? It's training. And training is in following. See this young man. When we were going to school, yourself and Paul, they came to ask me, say, Pastor, if you had to go to university again, what will you do? And I began to tell them, I will do this, I will do this, I will do this, I will do this, I will do this. And what do you think about free in school? Do you understand? I mean, like, what I enjoy, they enjoy. Am I like? 
People come to you, is, I'm, you are in final year now. You are going to final year. Final year. I'm going to come and say they were saying seed to man of God. In school, nobody was giving me seed. Am I making sense to you? But from the things I had missed, I said, go and do this. Now someone will come to you, you've impacted our life so much. When I see on his birthday and I see post, I say, eh? Oh my God, Pastor B. Do you understand? But he said, I say, don't go and be somebody's father. I say, I call you father. Just tell them I'm still unborn, I'm learning. Do you understand? All right? Now he has people around him that is training, is encouraging, is strengthening them. Those people will be loyal for life. Do you understand? If God calls him to ministry now and say, young man, arise, go to Porter Court, go and start a new work. Do you know there are some people who follow him? Mama said, for example, I didn't say anything. Or, you know, do you know there are people who follow him? Do you know there are people who follow him? That is, he doesn't have to get into Porter Court and be thinking of, Lord, send me men. Lord, send me men. Some just say, Pastor, this is where are you going next? I'm going to Porter Court. Wherever you go, I will go. That's the key in life. That's the key in life. Do you understand what I'm trying to say here? Yeah? That's the key in life. That's the key in life. And see, the same way it works in ministry, it works everywhere. It works in your career. It works in career also. All right? You are in the health line. Do you have somebody there who is teaching you? Who is coaching you? What the person got in 10 years, do you know you can get it in 3 years? Because the person will now tell you, Mark Bessel Sibanyan, don't do it this way, don't do it that way. That's what that Bible verse is talking about. That your latter end should greatly increase. But if you are going to access it, just ask. But it's not just asking, you ask in humility. You know some people, they stand before those who can train them, but they are the ones who do all the talking. What they know, you don't know. And then the one you know, you give everything out. And meanwhile, you need what they know. You should be calm and ask, sir, how do you do this thing? How does this happen? How does this happen? See, there is no meeting with my spiritual father that finishes, that I don't ask questions. As he's teaching. In fact, there was a day he was teaching. You know the way someone is teaching? He was teaching, he was saying, he wanted to say something. He now, you know the way I can want to say something? And he now cut it off. He now continued. In my notes, I wrote, I said, daddy was sharing a thought. He did not finish. So when we finished the teaching, I said, sir, you wanted to tell us so, 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 and so, and so, and so, but you did not tell us again. Sir, can you tell us? You know, I said, say, pastor, tell me. You know, on the point, most likely he didn't want to tell us. But when I was following him, I picked up a dodgy man, yes, sir. Explain it to us. And see, the moment he explained it to me, I knew the answer. Ah! This is a code of life. That's the point. So when you see people struggling, you are struggling with finances. But you see someone who is doing well. You know, the, what is the problem with our generation is that Cain will always kill Abel. Instead of Cain going to Abel, ah, you, you may sacrifice. You, how did they accept your sacrifice? And they did not accept my own. But you are now jealous and envious. You know, say, since they didn't accept my own, I kill you. He killed him. Did he get answer? What did he become for life? Vagabond. Wanderer. He could have gone in humility. So previous generation is not old age. Do you understand what I'm trying to say now? It's someone who has been where you have been and has gotten the answer. So, ah, you can go in humility. Ah, so then, I did the same offering now. God did not accept my own. It will kill low, low. What did you do? And everybody will say, ah, egg bon, egg bon. Is it my queen? Like, egg bon, egg bon. Oh, come here, egg bon. Ah, egg bon, too, mom, go, come, she. Do you understand what I'm trying to say now? It's humility. Egg bon, you, mom, my queen, me, like, bon. Type of money is only queen, me, like, bon. Egg bon, you, mom. It's humility. And so, oh, go, say, mom, bio, go, say, mom, bio, go, say, mom, bio, go, say, mom, bio. All right, let me get it. Oh, bro. You know, refuse the odds to shalaye when the question is coming. Do you understand? Get it for me. And person can say, ah, egg bon, you see, when I went to the farm, I picked the first means. I did this, ah. Then you pick first me, so I just oh, think of my average age. And then he goes back. Do you know he can go back and say, ah, he carries a new, raise a new altar, carries his son, and now raise it. And he will raise the same excellent sacrifice. And God said, be blessed. But you see, we have a tendency of wanting to kill our Abels. If you have someone who is going ahead of you, they are getting it right. You are not getting it. Beyond boo. Beyond boo. Beyond boo. Beyond boo. Age is not age. What's age? What's age? I'm saying, show more age, meaning. What has your age done for you? What has the age done for you? Do you understand what I'm trying to say now? All right. Or you say, uh, you, know, you know, sometimes title can, can kill a person. Hope you know. I say, you, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm doctor, so, so, and so. Or I'm pastor. Don't, don't you know I'm, I'm, I'm your HOM, yeah? That's where you will stay. But when you go in humility and say, you got this thing right. There's something you got right. Teach me. Teach me. Please sit down. Thank you. Can you help me celebrate them? Please sit down. Let me close on this note. 
I'm just being, I don't want to push beyond there because if I get into a new area, we may not be able to finish. But listen, if there is something I want you to pick from today, is humility. What did I call it? What did I call it? Meekness. You know the Bible says that I did, go to verse 8, I don't know anything. I was born but yesterday. I don't know it. Lord, help me get it. I don't know it. See, the moment you say you don't know it, is humility. It says it gives grace to what? To the humble. It gives grace to the humble. See, I don't mind serving someone I can learn from. Do you understand? Yeah, I will, see, if carrying your bag will take me to the same classroom where you are learning, I will carry your bag. You will think you are the only one in classroom, but I will sit down there with your bag. What am I doing? I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm learning. And that's the power of service because I will have access into places. I will have access to things. I will have access to information. Do you get what I'm trying to say here? That's the power there. Thank you, Hannah Pratt. No. There's no pride there. Say there is no pride. There is no pride. Say I'm willing, I'm willing to learn. So this is the first part. I'm sure we're going to continue on Tuesday. But follow through. Okay? Do what? Follow through. Learn. Learn. How is this done? Don't kill your Abel. Tell someone beside you, say, don't kill your Abel. Kill your Abel. Go and learn from your Abel. Yeah, Abel, teach me. I don't understand it. Can you teach me? Can you teach me? That's how we do it. Is that all right now? You know, for many years, I was just doing ministry. <laughs> Myself and Mama would just keep telling us, it seems as though ministry just started like three years ago. We've been doing a lot. It's not as though we didn't do a lot. But we just sat down one day and said, ah, it's like ministry started three years ago. And the only difference was humility. What was the difference? Humility. I'm telling you. Humility. It was humility. The moment my posture changed towards those who can train me, they began to pour more into me. Knowledge. Impartation. Do this. Do this, sir. Do this. In fact, some of them say, ah, pastor, don't take this step. In fact, when we were to plant a bad church, all right, my brother in a kitty said, he said, he said, pastor, me, don't make this mistake. I said, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. But how do you think they started telling me those things? Posture. The moment my posture changed, they began to tell me a lot more. But in every hour meeting, a meeting, I'm a dear man of God. Hey, man of God. Hello. How you doing? Ah, hello. Hi. Man of God. They will call you man of God. You'll be sinking. You'll be sinking. They'll be saying emoji. Man of God. And they'll be healing you. Eh? But they're healing you to your grave. That's a man of God. I want to learn. Explain this thing to me. Do you understand? And he told me, he said, Pastor, me, someone did so, so, and so, he lost so, so, and so number of members. He said, don't do it. I said, yes, sir. And I didn't do it. We moved from Iraq. We didn't lose anybody. Nobody left church because pastor has gone to Ibadan. Nobody. Do you understand? But you know that people have made that move and church went like this. People started leaving. Ah, but when you learn, when you learn, you can master certain things. Does this make sense to you? Were well, you blessed this morning? Is this solid life application for you? So it doesn't matter the journey you are on. Even if you are in politics, be humble. Do you understand? Be what? Be humble. be humble. I told one of my sons, I said, it doesn't matter. Just be humble. Stay there. The day is your turn. It will, it will turn to your end and nobody can do anything about it. There are people who should have been governors today, but they were not humble enough. He works everywhere. In business, be humble. In family life, be humble. Even to my wife, sometimes I'm humble. Do you understand what I'm saying now? I said, before I didn't used to be humble, I used to be like this. Proud guy. I'm telling you, my, my shoulder pad was I. Ask her, she's here now. You know I was smiling at the beginning. Today makes 11 years that I asked her out. That's when I saw that date. Yeah, that's how I was smiling. Now listen, listen. You know what? I don't know shoulder pad like this. Uh, do you know I'm the head of this family? Head of fish. If you don't know, you don't know. Do you understand what I'm saying now? If you don't know, you don't know. Before I used to be like this. We're still laughing and, you know, I was still teasing now on something. I said, this church now, like this place now, just go and bring red log. He said, like they used to do in your village. <laughs> but he said, that was who I used to be. Do you understand? I used to be a man of colors, like that of Joseph. Have you seen the ch church of, you know the color of church those days now? Am I right, sir? You know, anybody in our former life, who used to know us in our former life? You know our former life. You know those are our backdrop. You see yellow, red, purple, green, white. It almost looked like the house of an abalist. But yet, we were proud. And then she was telling me, ah, you your job, I'll find it, say, oh, fine. 
This thing is fine. Forget it. But see, when you don't know, you don't know. But when we started going, when I started going out and I started seeing what people knew, ah, I was like, ah. <laughs> then I have to come in humility and say, ah, you need your job. <laughs> like, so now, so when they wanted to stay this place, when they were there, I follow, I said, ask Pastor Ronke. Humility to me. What should we put there? Ask Pastor Ronke. He said, ah, if, she has not decided, if she has not decided, discuss it. Ah, let us know what we want to do. Me, I don't know. Because if you leave me alone, I can tell you to paint this thing black. <laughs> do you understand? And then I'll put grace on it. I said, you know, you can even put rainbow in the middle so that they can know that the ark of salvation is also close to this place. So you see, beyond who? You are laughing, but it's a serious matter. So, <laughs> some of you know the reason why you're on the same spot is this absence of what? Humility. This absence of, you already know the reason why you are there. You are laughing now. Be laughing. But as you are laughing, be repenting. Do you understand? Be repenting. That Lord, I don't know. That which I do not know, teach me. That which I do not understand, Lord, show me. Lord, show me. Because if you follow in the steps of giants, you will get to where they get to. Were you blessed this morning? Were you blessed this morning? Father, we come before you today in humility of heart. We say we do not know it all. Lord, in any way we've been proud and haughty. We humble ourselves before you today. And we ask in the mighty name of Jesus. The time we've missed, the opportunities we've missed. Lord, in humility, you are the one who said you will restore the years. Father, for someone today, let that restoration begin. Amen. Restoration of peace Amen. in their family. Amen. Restoration of speed Amen. in their career. Amen. Restoration of progress Amen. in their business. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we give you all the glory. Be thou exalted, O God. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen. Were you blessed this morning? Were you blessed this morning? All right, put your hands together and celebrate Jesus. Let's give to the Lord. Amen. Let's give to the Lord this morning. I want to keep the time because... Hope you're not keeping the time. It's also a trend. Have I told you the story of the man that went to preach? the church I was serving in you. And when he went to preach in church, after 10 minutes, they gave him, I think, 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, I said, the Holy Spirit is asking me to say something. The Holy Spirit is telling me something. The Holy Spirit is telling me something. He used one hour. And I know my pastor. He didn't stand up. Oh. But when he was done, the pastor, pastor came on the other. I said, that same Holy Spirit I was telling you to use extra time. He will give you another opportunity to preach. So training. Someone said training. He helps you. He helps you. Also. And people love having people who are trained around them. People love having those who are what? Those who are trained around them. I'm telling you, when people are thinking of who to give access to, they would rather give it to someone who is trained. They do that. They do that. Okay? So maybe the reason why that door has not opened for you yet is because you are still proud. Okay? You'll be there for long until you are learning. You learn to be humble and you follow through with what? With training. When you come on Tuesday, we'll be talking about the two areas where we have to be trained. The Bible spoke about David in Psalm 78, 70 to 72. He said he had integrity of art and skillfulness of hands. So there has to be a preparation of the art and a training of the hands. If you are, have integrity but you are not skillful, you will still be on your own. Alright? You know some people in this country, remember, that they said they had integrity but they could not really lead us well. You know where we are right now. But some people, they are skillful, but they also don't have integrity. They, they are so skillful that they will steal everything. So you need both. And Bible says that's the quality that David had. And that's the quality you should also have. In the training of the arts, we'll talk about the training on submission, on honor, on loyalty, and all that. Okay, in the training of the hands, we're going to talk about excellence, so like we're talking about here. Is that okay now? In the training of the arts, we'll talk about love work. We'll talk about love work. So I'm sure you are definitely going to be blessed.